QuickBooks Online 2024 Comparative Profit and Loss P&L or Income Statement. Get ready and clear your mind because we don't overanalyze. We intuit with Intuit's QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are online in our browser, searching for QuickBooks Online Test Drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com and the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, selecting the United States version of the software and verifying that we're not a robot. Opening up our major financial statement reports like we do every time, reports on the left-hand side, we're in the favorites, right-clicking on that balance sheet, open link in new tab, right-click on the profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement, our point of focus in this presentation, open the link in a new tab, let's close this first tab, we don't need that. Back to the middle tab, closing up the hamburger. We're gonna change that range, bringing it back to two. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't wanna be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP, you see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either. Anyone can and should have at least one, possibly multiple CPA thinking caps. Why? Because based on our scientific survey of five people, all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps, wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey is saying. So get one because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. 1023, 010123 tab, 123123 tab, run it to refresh it. Let's tab to the right and close up the hamburger and then change that range once again, back in time. We're going back in time, people. 010123 tab, 123123 tab. Run it to refresh it. There's our profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement, sometimes abbreviated as the P and L report. We looked at last time, the general comparison of the balance sheet income statement and the profit and loss general report as it is here. Like with the balance sheet now, we could run multiple different formats of the profit and loss report. Remember that in future presentations as well, we went through a lot of the formatting tools up top. We won't go through all of the different customization and formatting tools again, because most of them will be very similar from report to report. However, we do want to point out that there's that difference between whether a report is a point in time report as the balance sheet is, meaning it has one date being reported here compared to a report that has a range of time, such as the profit and loss report that is reporting activity or performance over that time range. So now we're, when we do these comparative reports, for example, you, you're going to notice some differences in that time range report versus the point in time report. Okay, so if we did some comparative reports, we can do a similar process as we did with the balance sheet. We might say, I want to compare or just see multiple periods. We might not call this a comparative report because that would indicate that we're subtracting out columns, having two, two periods that we're comparing. Instead, we're going to run the report by month or by a quarter. So that's the drop down here. If I run it by month, then I can say run, and there we have it. So now it's broken out by month. And if I go to the right of it, it gets us this total column, which isn't done on the balance sheet. That's one of the differences. If I go to the balance sheet and I was to say, show me this by months, then it's just going to give you 12 months, no total. Why no total? Because the months are as of a point in time, as of the end of the month. It doesn't make sense 
to total up all the months on the balance sheet does make sense on the income statement because the income statement is basically like showing us how far we drove in a particular, this is my analogy, you drive in your car and see how, how far you can go in a day or something like that. And then when you drive it the next day to compare to the last day, you either reset the odometer or kind of count from that point going forward, right? That's what's happening with the profit and loss. So therefore we can give how far we went in this analogy on each of the months and we can total them up and see how far we went in the entire year would be the general, uh, the general idea. So we can also do that then by day, we can do it by week, uh, we can do it by month, we can do it by quarter. Quarters is quite common. So now we have the income, they didn't have any data for the first two quarters, and, but we, and we don't have much data in the third quarter, but we can compare the, the quarters. So we can look at them at least side by side. Also note when we do these types of reports, QuickBooks defaults to have the oldest period first, reading like a book from left to right, oldest to newest, and that's fine, although sometimes you will see reports, as we'll see shortly in the comparative reports, where they put the current month first. That makes sense to some degree because the current month is the most important month generally because it's the one closest to us. If I, I could do it by year, if I did it by year, then it doesn't change anything. Well, it puts a total on it, but we would have to change the year to go back to 2000. Uh, 22, right? If I went to the last two years, there's nothing in 22, but now you have the range expanding between the two years, and then I can do it year by year. Let's bring it back up to 2023. And then we have uh, the customers. Now, this isn't, this is kind of strange. They have it in the display columns area, which you kind of think of as like time frames, but this is by customer. So if I run it by customer, then I get the, the customers up top. This will be useful if you're using something like a job cost type of system. You might run a report like this so you can see the information that's, that's happening on a, on a customer by customer uh, type of basis. We might touch on that a little bit here, but a job cost system uh, is a thing in and of itself. So we might have a specialty section or course on uh, job cost systems in particular. You can do a similar thing by vendor which means that it has the vendors up top and it's breaking out the, the income and expenses by vendor. When you think about vendors, most likely you're thinking about the expense side of things now being, bro being broken out. This could be a quite long report uh, if you had a lot of vendors, which oftentimes people do. And then you can do it the same by employees, products and services. So if we run it by products and services, now you've got them uh, up top and you can see what you're selling in terms of income and and the cost of goods sold that's associated with the income on a product by product basis which could be uses useful and then you have your tags tags is a special kind of tool that is another sorting category and you can see you can sort it here you might also if, as we're thinking about these if you have uh if you have class tracking on you can also often basically sort your income statement by class tracking. Those are specialty tools, class tracking and tags, location tracking, similar tools. We have another section or course specializing in those areas as well. So that's going to be one way that you can do comparative reports. Let's go back to the total. Another way that you can do the comparative uh, types of reports is that you can say, I want to have the current period and then compare it to the prior period. So if we want to compare December to the prior month of uh, November, I can change the range up top to 11, let's go to 12, 12, 0123. So now I have the month of December up top, just the month of December. And then I want to compare it to the prior month, selecting the drop down. I can say, give me the prior month. And it defaults here to November. That looks correct. So I'm just going to say, let's run that. So now we have a comparative report, but now they put the current month first, and that's fine because that's our most important month. And then the prior month second, also note with these comparative reports, we can only compare two periods because likely with the comparative reports, the next step you want to do is not add up the two periods, having a total, which is nice too on the income statement where it's not as big deal on the balance sheet. But what you want to do instead is subtract them to see the difference in what your performance was in the current month versus the prior month in this case. So if I select the drop down, we say, give me the dollar change, por favor. 
if you please. I'm going to pull out the trusty calculator and so we can do some calculations. So then of course we have, for example, the totals down here, 2455.64, well wait, that's not right. The current month is up top, 1296.58 minus the 2455.64. That gives us the negative 115906. Uh, that's great. We can compare that to our prior months and stuff and how, we're, how we've been doing in the past. But if we want to compare it to another company, like if we were a McDonald's and we, want, if we were like a hamburger shop and we want to compare it to McDonald's or something, they make way too much money for me to think to compare my dollars to dollars. But we could compare possibly percentages when we benchmark. And so if we run the percentages in our performance type report, percent change, run that one, run that one. So now if I do that same thing, I've got the 1269.58 minus the 2455.64. That gives us a negative 155, uh, 1159.06. And then I divide that by the prior month. That's how you do the percent increase or decrease by the prior month, 2455.64. And that gives us, if I move the decimal two places over, a 48.2% increase. So if we, or decrease, I'm sorry, because it was a negative here. But if, so if hamburger sales went down by, for us by 48%, that's terrible, or whatever the sale, and I compared that to like a McDonald's, did their sales follow a similar trend? would be the question. If they did, then maybe the assumption would be, of course, that it's a market thing and not an us thing. It's not that people just got mad at us and they, they canceled us on the YouTubes or something and then now no one likes us and they keep on t stealing our hamburgers and throwing them at people for some reason because I don't know what happened. But in any case, now we can say we could do it and on these ones like 247.81 minus 227.01. We get the 120. I can take that and divide it by the prior month, 127.01. And then that's going to be 95.11% uh, increase in this case, right? And we can see that on a line by line basis. That's nice. I can, I can customize this report like I typically would customizing up top because it might be used for external usages and we do our normal negative numbers bracketed I often will remove the pennies show it in red and then in the headers and footers we might remove the date time report basis then of course we might change the name now on the profit and loss the basic name change you might do if it was just a normal profit and loss is call it an income statement just that might stand you apart a little bit because maybe some people see, maybe some people see that as more like a professional or whatever they like to call it an income statement rather than a profit and loss it just depends on what you've what you've gotten used to i guess so you can then call it an income statement and uh there but when we do a comparative we might want to call it a comparative income statement so now it's a comparative income statement and then, of course, once we do this, if we're going to save this to our external reporting, like we did with the balance sheets, we might want to save this stuff so we can go up and memorize the report. I want to save the customization. I'll make a new group and I'll just call it like month end reports group reports and then add it. Boom, bam, save it. So there we have that. If I go into the first tab and then go to my customized reports and refresh the screen. So there, now we have the save. So I can simply open that up and go directly to it uh, going forward. So you can also do other comparative reports as well. So now we're com and you, this is where we have to think how how many reports do I want to be given? Because we saw that there's a bunch of different reports we can do once we dive into the realm of comparative reports, horizontal analysis reports, month by month reports, and so on on the balance sheet. And now we have a similar thing on the income statement, right? Because I could compare, for example, the these two periods. I could say I want to compare uh, the quarter, right? I, I, I could say from, I'll stop saying right. 
10 one 2 3 I got I think I got a thing I got a thing developing I'm saying right too many times I can tell I'm annoying myself so any case there's the prior quarter and the current quarter and so so you can do a quarter by quarter comparison you might do a you know a half a, a year by year uh, comparison so we might we might take this for the whole year 01 01 2 3 to 12 31 2 3 and there's January through December and the prior period there was nothing in it the prior period but you get the idea then let's bring it back uh, let's bring it back to normal so I'll bring it back to normal here before we do the next thing the next thing we can do is if I hit the drop down up top we, we might want to compare the current uh, to the previous year so I might go down here and say okay I want to compare to the previous year and I'll do the same thing with the dollar change and the percentage change. So now instead of comparing to the previous month, it's going to go to the previous year. So let's, for example, take this to back to one month of 120123. So now it's comparing December of 2023 to the prior year. There's nothing in it, but the prior year's December. And if I wanted to compare November or whatever, I could do that. Or if I want to compare like the quarter, 10 uh, 01 23 to 12 31 23 now it's comparing the quarter the last quarter of 2023 compared to uh 2022 the last quarter we can do the ha last half of a year the last two quarters and uh so on and so forth with this formatting the next one we have here is going to be the year to date so we can compare the current period like a month that we're looking at compared to the year to date numbers. Notice that we have a few more options here than we saw on the balance sheet because the balance sheet is a point in time report. And so that there's where some of the differences lie. So I'm gonna say percent of year to date as well. I'll go ahead and run it. So now we've got this first one being December and then the year to date is January to December. Remember that this data set only had stuff in it for the last few months, the last quarter or so. So that's why there's not a huge difference in the numbers, but you can see uh, that comparison as well. Then we also have the previous year to date. So if I hit the drop down here, we can compare to the previous year to date. So I'm going to say, okay, run that. And so there's our numbers for December. And now we have the previous year to date, January through December of 2022. Nothing's in it for this time because there's no data in that time range with our data set. Okay, so we'll get back into, in future presentations, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, these items in future presentations, but those are the general comparative reports. So the general idea with the comparative reports, let's bring it back to normal first, run it. Usually two types of comparisons, one where you're gonna be comparing things and then have the total of the things that have been compared, usually in time frames, months, quarters, uh, years, but you could also do customers, vendors, and and uh, classes and whatnot. And doing this will allow you to have a total column that sums them up and allow you to have more than two periods to show on one report. Uh, and then the other comparative report format would be this way, where you're going to choose the current period that you're in, like month, quarter, or uh, year and then select the previous period so it'll pick the previous period or you can pick the previous year same time in the previous year same month same quarter so on in the previous year or you can do that year to date items down here the most common ones would probably be uh, these two up top let's go back to the most common might be the previous period so we have uh, November and December comparison and the general layout looks like this you might call this a comparative income statement. Sometimes it might be called like a horizontal analysis that you might hear that term because we're comparing and doing our calculations horizontally as opposed to a vertical analysis, which we'll talk more about in a uh, future presentation.